Hi guys, welcome to our channel. We have started a new series of movies reviews, in which we will tell you about the movie, what's right and what is not in this movie. Today we will give you a review on All Day and Night, because there is a lot of demands to give a review on it. Black Panther co-writer Joe Robert call it Rex an urban drama embered with a steadfast fatalism. The filmmakers behind All Day and A Night dig a big hole for their man character right off the bat. No sooner have we met a spring occult and rapper joker Ashton Sanders than we see him gun down a man and his wife in front of their 10 years old daughter quietly, coldly and without a moment hesitation. Friends must like our videos because it takes a lot of effort to make a video. One request from all of you before starting the video. Like our videos to encourage us and we can make more great videos for you. Let's move on to today's video. Under normal circumstances, audiences are accustomed to feeling some empathy for the leading character in the movies. This year it's part of the movie going contract that the pupil who I spent the most time watching are going to be people we can feel for and often even like. But one thing, all day on a night reveals of a leading man as a cold-blooded killer in the first five minutes, exactly daring us to feel anything for the curve for the next two hours. It's a bold movie, particularly when Jack Steve Fastly refuses to explain himself to any of the other characters or even to us in the voiceovers that run throughout the film. I think people say they wanna know why, but they really don't, he says. They want an easy answer. One of the odd things about all the end of night is that eventually the movie itself gives us an answer and it's one that you might even consider easy. Another is that for all the boldness of its approaches, which extends to the way the film is structured by jumps around in time, it often feels literally rather than urgent. For an urban drama that's full of shootings and beatings, that movie is grossly lag edithical. But it also has a kind of seed fast fatalism that quite deliberately undercuts much of what we see on the screen. From the opening moments, we know that Joker is going to murder two people and go to jail for it. So when we see him attempt to launch a career in rap or try to get out of the life of drugs and violence that trapped his father and many of his friends, we know he's not going to succeed. But even if you want to root for him to escape, the movie tells us you and then keeps reminding you that it's not going to happen. All Day and A Night, which premieres on Netflix on Friday, was written and directed by Joe Robert, Cole Best, known for his co-writing, Black Panther, with Lan Kohler, and for writing and executive producers episodes of the American Crime Story TV series. This is only his second film as a director of the 2011 Amber Lake, but it feels like the work of someone who is determined to bring a different approach to stories of inner city life. Like Cogler's Fruitwell Station, Carlos Lopez, Astrada, Blend Spotting, and Boo Trillies. Sorry to bother you. Among recent films, All Day and A Night is set in Auckland in a community that Jokers says in a while story is home to generation of men. Brothers, uncles, cousins, all of us parts of the same story on fucking repeat. In Jack's house, those generations are represented by himself and his father, JD, and a violent man who uses beatings to teach his son to never back down and always hit back. The young Joker is played by Jalen Hall with the hurt now leaving his eyes, while the adult Joker is Moonlight star Ashton Sanders who does all he can to appear blank and expressions less but less us glimpsy what lies beneath. But one thing, while Jacker doesn't say much to the other characters as the film bounces between the prison where he has been sent and the life he had before, he talks a lot to the audience, sharing his lessons of survival to the point where they come across as more explanation than demonstration. Slavery taught black people to survive, he says, but not how to live. Jacker himself obviously has trouble figuring out how to live, particularly when his girlfriends get pregnant and he prepares for the fatherhood. He's surrounded by gangsters and doesn't mind working for them as muscles but the draws the line at getting involved in drugs which sent his father on the road to destruction. He tries to get a sales job but 
is subject to daily indignities and suspicion what he calls a million techniques that don't matter until you realize you are bleeding to death. Despite the blast of violence, the film feels like a meditation on his life and one that takes its time even as we know where it's going. The film cinematography by Jessica Lee Gangi, who recently shot episodes of Mar, Mr. America and Escapes at Dana Minora, has a rich, dark look and the Sanders is compelling even when he is a passive. But it feels slow until close to the end when it finds its voice in a story of scenes between Joker and Jadis who is the played by Jeffrey Wright, an actor who can let you glimpse the humanity behind even the hardest facts it. As Joker is his father's and then beings to make a tentative connection, Sanders and White let us feel the weight of generations and all day and a night, which begin in a blast of gunfire, ends as a sad but touching lament. Dear viewers, our call to introduce you every Hollywood movie and English TV series. We express your opinion in the comments below and let us know how you like our videos. Share our channel and thumbs up on our videos. If you have liked this informative video then press the below like button and encourage us. Thanks for watching.